This video is based on the article, Fire Down Below, by Samuel Halpern. It's well known that a small coal fire was smoldering in one of Titanic's coal bunkers when she departed Southampton on April 10, 1912. The cause was spontaneous combustion, a common occurrence within steamships. Inside the coal bunker, friction or a buildup of heat causes the coals to begin to smolder. According to survivors, leading firemen Frederick Barrett and Charles Hendrickson, work to empty the coal bunker and combat the fire began with the first shift after leaving Southampton for New York. It took the workers until Saturday, April 13th to get enough coal shifted out of the bunker located in the aft starboard section of Boiler Room 6 so they could put out the fire. Referring to Fireman Barrett again, a hose was placed on the coal to dampen the smoldering coals and the fire put out. The watertight bulkhead, labeled Bulkhead E, separated Boiler Rooms 6 and 5 with coal bunkers on each side. The fire occurred on the forward starboard side. After extinguishing the fire, Fireman Barrett noticed the bottom of the watertight compartment was dinged aft and the other part was dinged forward. Fireman Hendrickson also reported, You could see where it had been red hot. All the paint and everything was off. It was dented a bit. Yes, warped. I just brushed it off and got some black oil and rubbed over it. It is also worth noting that Hendrickson said he could see that it had been red hot, but he did not observe the bulkhead glowing red hot, as is often reported in various conspiracy articles. So, how hot was the fire? Coal combusts or burns at 750 degrees Fahrenheit or 399 degrees Celsius. Because of the heat, Barrett elaborated that the forward coal bunker in front of watertight bulkhead E had to be empty by way of digging out the unscorched coal. Also, he gave evidence that the one aft of it may have also emptied to prevent that coal from overheating and combusting as well. Without a good and steady supply of oxygen, it won't get much hotter than 750 degrees because it can't. Have you ever seen a smelting video on YouTube where they use charcoal to start a fire? They usually have an air blower or some fan forcing air into the fire to raise the temperature. It is the same principle here in Titanic's coal bunker. Titanic's bulkhead E comprised of mild steel which would require a 900 degree Fahrenheit temperature to become red hot, which is well under the range of smoldering coals. Furthermore, Samuel Halpern's essay speaks of a metallurgy test done on steel similar to that used on Titanic. A piece of steel was taken and riveted to other pieces of metal to represent the hull and stokehold plates. Then the steel was heated to 1,200 degrees Fahrenheit, or roughly 650 degrees Celsius. Not only the steel dented, but it still was sufficiently strong once cooled down, both by air and using a hose to do its job. Furthermore, the analysis stated that the rivets bonding the watertight bulkhead to the hull and floor only stressed to 10 to 20% of their failure load ruling out the possibility of the rivets failing as well. This aft coal bunker behind bulkhead E is where Barrett observed water flooding Boiler Room 5 during the collision with the iceberg after he had escaped from Boiler Room 6. Fireman George B. Trump in Boiler Room 6 had this to say about the collision. After the order was given to shut up or shut the dampers, an order was given to draw the fires. I could not say how many minutes, but the order was given to draw the fires. Water was coming in on the plates when we were drawing the fires, coming through the bunker door and over the plates, coming through the bunker. Beechamp's testimony seems to confirm that the iceberg had also damaged the hull where the forward coal bunker was adjoining watertight bulkhead E and the aft bunker, 
which Barrett saw upon escaping into Boiler Room 5. Later on in the sinking, after the men in Boiler Room 5 had extinguished the boiler fires, most of them left and went up on deck. Barrett remained behind to open a manhole cover on the floor so that workers could have access to the pumping system. Accomplishing it would allow work to begin to pump water from the forward section of the ship as best as possible. Second engineer Jonathan Shepard, who was helping Barrett, fell in the hole and broke his leg. Barrett and an engineer, Herbert Harvey, then carried Shepard to the pump room located in the aft port section of Boiler Room 5. Fifteen minutes after Shepard broke his leg, Barrett testified that he saw a rush of water coming up between the boilers. He said that Herbert Harvey ordered him to climb the escape ladder and he did so, evacuating to Scotland Road on E-Deck. When given the question if it could have been a bulkhead at the front of the compartment failing, Barrett said, I have no idea on that, but that is the bunker that was holding the water back. By Barrett's approximation, this wave of water was seen at roughly 1.10 a.m. When he made it to E-Deck, he saw water coming down the alleyway from forward. So, if we know the metal was not heated enough to cause this wave of water spotted by Barrett, where did it originate? The most likely answer is the failure of one or several of the coal bunker doors. They are designed to hold back the coal in the bunkers and thus not watertight. We know that water was in that coal bunker because Barrett spotted it after he entered the room upon escaping from Boiler Room 6. To quote Halpern's article, Taking into account the capacity of the transverse bunker space and allowing for some remaining coal, a buildup of 440 tons of seawater could have easily filled that space between the tank top and F-deck if gone unchecked. We know that water was on F-deck before the flooding of Boiler Room 5, as Joseph Wheat, a first-class steward, saw water flowing down the bottom level of the grand staircase onto F-deck at roughly 12.50 a.m., roughly 20 minutes before Barrett escaped Boiler Room 5. This location is 60 feet aft of where Barrett was at 1.10 a.m. when the room flooded. Halpern's essay goes further by saying, If water had reached a height of just 10 feet over the stokehold plate level in the bunker by that time, it would have created a total force against each bunker door of about 3 tons. If a bunker door gave way as a result of a pressure head of about only 10 feet, the velocity of water that would come bursting out of the bunker would be close to 25 feet per second. If it were the main watertight bulkhead between the two boiler rooms that failed, Barrett would not have had time to reach the escape ladder, let alone hear Engineer Harvey order him up.